I won't stop till I hear him say Warning, the information that we convey in these videos and the content on this page simply provides general consumer information. It is not legal advice or regulatory guidance. It is not intended to sway your personal bias in any way. We are simply just relaying information already available to the general public. We highly suggest you do your own research and draft your own opinion on the topics disclosed in this video breakdown. Without further ado, sit back, relax, enjoy this video breakdown, and if you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, consider doing so now. If traditional financial institutions want to avoid falling behind, they need to increase their pace of adapting to this new asset class and its underlying technology. Okay, what is going on CyberX Advanced YouTubers? Welcome back to the CyberX YouTube page. In today's video breakdown, I have a very interesting video breakdown for you all today. We're going to be going over some PDS from some regulatory bodies. I'm going to show you all the devil in the details going down the rabbit hole. We're also going to be going over a Bitcoin maximalist video clip where I'm going to disprove some of the things that he says in this video breakdown, showing you guys some regulatory PDFs from some regulated bodies and entities in this cryptocurrency market space. If you guys enjoy going down rabbit holes like this, showing you guys that the proof is in the pudding in the documentation surrounding the future of the cryptocurrency space, make sure that you guys smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's jump in. So we're going to start on this cryptocurrency PDF that was sent to me by one of the CyberX students. Shout out to you, Robert. Greatly appreciate all the hard work that you put into finding these documents here at our CyberX research PDF team, going over cryptocurrency PDFs and whatnot, sifting through the details and sending me these documents. I cannot stress enough how appreciative I am of your hard work. So we're going to start with this document. And this is a document on crypto regulation between now all the way up until 2023, 2024, and 2023. So there's some interesting key dates that you all as viewers need to pay attention to something that we've been mentioning for quite some time on this YouTube space that this regulatory framework that is being put into place is going to take time anywhere between now and 2025. I've shown you all the documents over multiple YouTube video breakdowns, giving you guys clear perspectives on what to expect in this market space surrounding regulatory framework. So we're going to start on this PDF here and it says, the regulatory focus on digital assets has increased dramatically over the last few years and will continue to do so. And I want you all to pay attention to key phrases on this PDF. It says and talks about right here, the global asset class, and it talks about the global standard setters for this global asset class, right, which is cryptocurrency. So it says right here, the global standard setters are accelerating the push for international cooperation. Now, reading this in this PDF, I'm the type of person that's like, hmm, well, who are the global standard setters? So we're going to get into that in today's video breakdown. Many local authorities have publicly announced their plans to become global centers for digital assets, technology, and innovation. The European Union is at an advanced stage of its finalizing the new markets and crypto assets regulation. In the United Arab Emirates, Dubai authorities are setting up the world's first authority solely focusing on virtual assets. Switzerland has integrated one of the most mature regulatory frameworks for digital assets, allowing the market participants to gain certainty on the legal and regulatory treatment of their projects and intended activities. So reading this, again, I mentioned to you all the global standard setters. We're going to get into who these individuals are today. So we come over here and this PDF continues and it says the digital asset ecosystem has reached a turning point. What this crypto regulation report shows is that many regulators across the globe have either enacted regulatory schemes for dealing in crypto assets or are on the brink of doing so. The commonly used justification for traditional financial institutions not embracing the potential which digital assets can bring to the organization, its customers and the ecosystem as a whole will no longer hold true. So it's pretty much saying that these regulatory bodies and these financial institutions need to embrace this technology, right? We come down here and it says, despite the onset of the crypto winter at the beginning of 2022, public interest in the digital asset space remains high. Whether it's a consistent base of investment into cryptocurrencies, the continued listing of new projects, or the recovery of a security token and non-fungible token NFT markets, retail investors remain committed to digital assets. Institutional investors are also increasingly entering the space, and the number of crypto-based funds is steadily rising. If traditional financial institutions want to avoid falling behind, they need to increase their pace of adapting to this new asset class and its underlying technology. So it's literally telling you all right now that if financial institutions don't adapt to what is going on in this space, that they are going to fall behind. 
So if they want to avoid falling behind, they need to adapt and put in regulatory framework for this cryptocurrency market space, okay? Coming over here, and remember again, we started off with this PDF by mentioning the global standard setters. So now we're gonna get into who these individuals are, right? So pay attention, here are some key dates. It says, global regulatory framework. In October, 2022, the Financial Stability Board, FSB, published a proposed framework and recommendations for the international regulation of crypto assets and the global stablecoin arrangements. We come over here and it says the FSB will finalize the proposed recommendations by July 2023. So there we have a date, summertime pretty much of 2023 next year. Further work may be, well, I'm going to release this video on the 1st of 2023, so this year, right? Further work may be required in 2023 on developments in the broader field of wider decentralized finance and DeFi, the associated financial stability risks. The FSB will review the implementation progress of its recommendations by the end of 2025 and take stock of the regulatory measures adopted by FSB member jurisdictions, including the achievement outcomes. So it says right here, the end of 2025. So we can expect some of this regulatory framework to be put in place summertime next year, all the way up until the end of 2025. You guys see the dates. Again, play the long run in this market space, and you will most likely come out on top not financial advice, but the devil's in the details surrounding the dates, okay? Everybody thought in 2022 that there was going to be some type of massive bull run. Yet here on this YouTube channel, we were telling you all for quite some time that this regulatory framework is going to take time. People laughed, people were in disbelief, and that was all because of the social media dopamine fix that everybody was entertaining in 2022, right? Coming over here to continue this document, this is where we're going to get into the global standard setters and who these individuals are. So on the same PDF, this is on page 12, it says, in October 2021, the Financial Action Task Force, so we're going to pay attention to that right there, the Financial Action Task Force, FATF, issued an update guidance for a risk-based approach to virtual assets and virtual asset providers. It is intended to help regulators to develop regulatory and supervisory directives for virtual asset activities and to help virtual asset service providers, VASPs, to understand and execute their AML CFT obligations. Okay? So the Financial Action Task Force is 110% part of this global standard setters, right? We come over here. Who else is part of this? In July 2022, the Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure and the International Organization of Securities Commissions, the CPMI, and the IOSCO issued a final report providing clarity on the application of principles for financial market infrastructures to stablecoin arrangements, which are considered systematically important financial market infrastructures. It is intended to assist national authorities in determining whether a stablecoin arrangement is systematically important. So these are important key players. We have the Financial Action Task Force, we have the Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructures, and we have the International Organization of Securities Commissions, whom are doing what? They're in the process of determining whether a stablecoin arrangement is systematically important. So they have and are sitting at the top of the food chain in the form of making decisions. They have the ability to make these decisions on what cryptocurrencies are systematically important. Do you all see that? Again, who are we talking about? The global standard setters. So now I'm going to show you all PDFs from these regulatory bodies where they talk about XRP and Ripple. But before we get into that, I'm going to play a little video clip of this Bitcoin maximalist who says that Bitcoin is the only decentralized platform and that no other cryptocurrencies are going to thrive onward in the next crypto market bull run. After we jump into this video breakdown, we're going to come back to the PDFs and I'm going to show you all the devils in the details and how these regulatory bodies, i.e. these global standard setters are the ones telling the world that Ripple and XRP is decentralized and that it is a virtual currency. Okay, so let's come over here. I'm going to play this video clip. I want you all to pay attention to what he says, because in this video breakdown, we're going to disprove that. You could argue, Mark, that a purge is exactly what the sector needs and perhaps that this is a good thing. Do you have any thoughts on what tokens, what protocols, what altcoins would potentially survive this? Sure. So I think there's a couple things here. So first of all, I believe that there is something really, really big going on here that most people are completely um, blinded to. And the reason why they're blinded to it is because cryptocurrency is here. And so what am I talking about? About every 50 years, last 300 years, about every 50 years, there's a technological revolution, not a new technology, but a technological revolution. The difference is a technology is like an iPhone. You take a computer and a phone, you put them together. Cool. That's nice. Changed my life. I like it. But a technological revolution changes the course of humanity and drives financial markets. There's been five industrial revolution, steam engines and railways, um, electricity and steel, oil, automobiles, and microprocessors. Mm -hmm. I believe Bitcoin is a technological revolution and the revolution is decentralization. 
Right. Now, decentralization is achieved because everybody in the world, anybody in a third world country with an old laptop could download the entire Bitcoin database and run a node. So it's decentralized. That problem has been solved. All the other 20,000 cryptocurrencies are not solving that problem. We're witnessing a revolution that Bitcoin is solving a problem that has plagued humanity from day one, which is how do I secure my property in a way that can't be manipulated, seized, or stolen? I can have custody of it. And if I want to send it to you, nobody could stop it, block it, or prevent it. And decentralization is what solved that problem. And so I think for most people who are just thinking about, oh, I'll buy this crypto token because I can make more US dollars, um, that person and the, the average Bitcoin maximalist or Bitcoin community member, they're just not seeing the world in the same way. All right. So again, you're making a very big distinction between uh, Bitcoin and crypto. I get that your theory says that not everything dies, but the hype in the sector as a whole dissipates. And Bitcoin would be exempt, I'm assuming, because it's classified or most likely classified as a commodity. Both uh, Gensler and the former SEC head, uh, Jay Clayton, both alluded yes. to Bitcoin being a commodity. So make your case why you think Bitcoin alone then will see another bull run. Yeah. So um, both, as you said, Jay Clayton, the previous head of the SEC and, and uh, Gary Gensler have both said that Bitcoin is a commodity. Bitcoin only is a commodity. Um, Gary Gensler believes that almost everything else is a, is a security. And if you look at just what a commodity is, a commodity is something that typically would come from the ground. Um, anybody in the world can get it and it's fungible no matter where it is. There's no common issuer. So think about oil. Anyone can go buy a piece of land in California or in Morocco or wherever and they can drill for oil. And if that oil comes out of the ground, it's fungible. I could grow wheat or uh, corn in, you know, in the Midwest or in the Ukraine and corn is corn. Anybody can buy land and grow corn or anybody can get gold. Um, same with Bitcoin. Anybody can go get a computer, hook up to the network and they can mine Bitcoin and Bitcoin is fungible. Um, there's no common issuer, right? All the other crypto Currencies, including Cardano and Ripple and Ethereum, had a common issuer. So they created that token and issued it. That's the difference of the security. Now, they've already been clear about it being a commodity, and it's now regulated under the CFTC. Cryptocurrency is yet to be seen what it's going to be ruled under, but most likely it's a security. I just saw today um, on well, well Chart on uh, Twitter, they said, just in, Vitalik Buterin says XRP is, quote, completely centralized. <laughs> okay, so I want you all to take away some of the key things that he said. He said all 20,000 other cryptocurrency assets are not decentralized. He talks about the revolution that decentralization brings. He says specifically and targets XRP and Ripple, okay? And so I'm going to show you all, and then last but not least, he mentions the CFTC. All right, you guys heard him mention the CFTC. I'm going to show you all documents from these regulatory bodies, specifically the CFTC, which he mentioned, again, a Bitcoin maximalist who does not do their research. You really think he takes the time to read these documents, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm up about to show you all today? No, he doesn't. He is oblivious to the fact that there's already regulatory framework put into place in many other countries. The United States is lagging and falling behind. And just because in the United States there's not regulatory clarity does not mean that there's not regulatory clarity in other countries. So he mentioned CFTC. And we already know, okay, coming over here, the global standard setters. Who are these individuals? I already showed you all. We have the Financial As Action Task Force. So let's go over here. And we have a PDF from the Financial Action Task Force, again, part of the global standard setters. And it says right here, decentralized virtual currencies, aka cryptocurrencies, are distributed open source math-based peer-to-peer virtual currencies that have no central administration authority and no central monitoring or oversight. Examples include... Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ripple. And it's interesting to say the least that these Bitcoin maximalists can't come to terms with the fact that Ripple and Bitcoin are always mentioned in the same sentences together. Okay. It's also interesting to say the least that he mentioned Bill Hinman and Gary Gensler and how Bill Hinman came and targeted Ripple XRP specifically and gave Bitcoin and Ethereum a free pass. Yet in all these documents from regulatory bodies, it mentions Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple. Yet Ripple got excluded. Okay, from that free pass. So now going over here, again, those global standard elite individuals, we have a PDF from the IOSCO. And if you don't remember who the IOSCO is, we can scroll up here to the top of this PDF. And it's the ISO Research Report for Financial Technologies, the International Organization of Securities Commission. So we come down here to page 54, where it mentions Ripple. And it says, meanwhile, on the other end of the decentralized spectrum, companies such as Ethereum and Ripple, Circle and TransferWise continue to explore a broad range of possible proofs of concepts and applications offered by permissionless distributed ledger technologies, including potential areas of applications outside the financial services industry. Now, also, if we scroll down here to page 70, it says, there are several emerging markets with cryptocurrency platforms operating with their jurisdictions. Cryptocurrency-based transfers are also increasingly common, especially in emerging markets with weak bank infrastructures or with capital controls. 
For examples, companies such as Circle make use of Bitcoin blockchain for real-time transfers of money at lower cost than traditional transfer channels. Ripple does the same through the use of its own cryptocurrency. So right here, it's talking about XRP and it labels it as a cryptocurrency. And again, this is coming from the International Organization of Securities Commissions, who is a part of this elite group of global standard setters. So again, if we come over here to this PDF, are part of the group of individuals who are deeming if cryptocurrencies are systematically important to the financial infrastructure. We come over here to another PDF, okay? This is straight from Lab CFTC, a CFTC primer on virtual currencies. Remember this individual right here, this Bitcoin maximalist said the words CFTC. And it's now regulated under the CFTC. He has not taken the time to read these documents. So it says right here, a CFTC primer on virtual currencies. And if we go down here to where it mentions Ripple in fine print, again, they're not going to blast this all over this PDF, but where it mentions Bitcoin, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is currently the largest convertible virtual currency by market capitalization. And we come down here and in fine print, it says, it is important to note that there are many other virtual currencies with sizable market capitalizations. Hmm, what do you mean virtual currencies, CFTC, that are built upon various blockchain technologies but may have different characteristic traits or functionalities than Bitcoin, including Ethereum, Litecoin, and Ripple. And again, it mentions other virtual currencies. So it's literally stating right here, this is a document from a regulatory body, the CFTC, stating that Ripple is a virtual currency. They're talking about XRP, ladies and gentlemen. Again, wake up. The devil's in the details. You all can go find these documents yourself and solidify the ideology behind the decentralization of Ripple and XRP, okay? We come over here. This is another document from the OICU, the IOSCO, International Organization of Securities Commission. And we come down here and it says, the IOSCO board agreed to establish a high-level board level fintech task force, okay? Who's on this task force? Well, if we scroll down here, it says, the work stream will be led by the UK Financial Conduct Authority. And remember, we're getting the IOSCO from this PDF that we started on, where it talks about crypto regulations and the report between now and 2023, 2024, 2025, these global standard setters, right? We came over here to this part of the PDF on page 12 where it mentions the Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure and the International Organization of Securities Commissions, right? So that's where we're getting this from. We're not just pulling these names out of our butt, right? This PDF right here is from the International Organization of Securities Commissions, who started a high-level board fintech task force. Who's on this task force? Okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to open the rabbit hole for you all to make sure that you all know that I'm not just pulling these connections out of out of the woodwork okay and it says right here the work stream will be led by the uk financial conduct authority or the fca well if we go over here to this pdf from the uk regulatory financial conduct authority it says uk regulatory approach to crypto assets and stable coins this is from the uk financial conduct authority .gov website and if we scroll down here to where it mentions ripple and xrp and check this out it says right here exchange tokens Tokens that are primarily used as a means of exchange, this includes widely known crypto assets such as Ethereum, Bitcoin, and XRP. Again, classifying it as an exchange token, not a security token. You guys see right here, there's a difference. They have security tokens labeled, and then they have exchange tokens labeled, okay? Interesting to say the least. And who is the UK Financial Conduct Authority? Again, they are part of this team, this board level fintech task force that was orchestrated by the International Organization of Securities Commissions, right? Who on previous PDFs also stated that XRP is a virtual currency, right? Interesting to say the least. So we come over here. Last but not least, I have this paper for you all. This is from the United States Government Accountability Office. It's a report on virtual currencies. And it says right here, report to the Committee on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs, US Senate. If we come down here, it's mentioned XRP five times, and it says, other virtual currencies that have been created are not based on the Bitcoin protocol. One of the more prominent examples is XRP, which is used within a decentralized payment system called Ripple. This is literally coming from a regulatory body, again, the United States Government Accountability Office, hmm, that mentions right here, 
that XRP is used within a decentralized payment system called Ripple. So with that being said, again, where it mentions virtual currencies, it mentions decentralized exchanges and Ripple and XRP being both of those things. These individuals right here that are trying to fudge you out of the market say that no other cryptocurrency is going to experience a bull run in the next crypto bull market is literally delusional and honestly should be taken down from the internet for spreading FUD like this. Okay, They do not want you invested in XRP. These regulatory bodies are not going to go out and tell you all that these PDFs are available for you to read. You have to go do the digging yourself. Who are these elite individuals? We have the global standard setters. Like you cannot just make this stuff up, ladies and gentlemen. The rabbit hole goes so deep. If you all like PDF breakdowns like this, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. I do appreciate the love and the support. I hope that you all like that rabbit hole deep dive. Again, Robert, I'd like to give a shout out to you for sending me this document, being a part of the CyberX PDF research team. I do appreciate all the hard work that you put into the crypto research that you provided for the CyberX community. With that being said, make sure that you all are doing your own personal research. Be cognizant, be aware. Make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel on your way out. And I will see you all in the next YouTube video breakdown. I won't stop till I hear him say, oh, oh.